Hello there and welcome to another video tutorial from face to face. This video tutorial is about data driven load flow or state estimation. Uh, over the next few minutes, we'll look into the what and why of data driven load flow, the, the workflow of data driven load flow and a small demo with the module that has been developed in version network analysis for this purpose. And uh, I'll also at the end uh, refer to where you can find uh, further documentation and uh, that can help you to understand it a bit more and even the back workings. So this is Sai Suprabhat Nibanapudi and without further ado, let's begin. Yeah, why do we need data driven load flow or state estimation? So one of the main reasons we do need that is to determine the network state. So the network state is essentially the voltages, the current, the power flows, everything that happens inside the power system network and we have to make sure, make sure that everything is under the limits to not have any problems or failures in the grid. So one more reason is the inclusion of distributed energy resources. So with the ongoing uh, debate on energy transition and the importance of it, we see that there are more and more charging points that are being established around us, then more and more PV panels in the households or in the grid. Uh, more and more wind energy plants so with all these being included there is bound to be a difference in how the grid works before these were not there and after these are there so it is imperative that there has to be a method to uh, make sure that all these work out in a very healthy manner into the grid to keep everything working and running as much in the positive sense as possible so th this is where data driven load flow comes into play and for what do we need it okay obviously the network health that has already been described a bit more bit in the why part that i talked about then better approximation obviously with more and more things that are being added into the grid it is impossible to uh, get an exact value of what is going on at each and every point so the next best possible uh, way to deal with this is to have a good approximation into what is really happening inside the grid and that is what is being delivered by data driven load flow then data driven load flow also takes care of looking into the past states and also the present states so this makes the model a bit more complex and uh, more uh, data intuitive than a normal load flow would have been uh, now ne in the next section we'll look into what uh, is the workflow of data driven load flow and follow it up with the small demo uh, in vision network analysis coming to the workflow of data driven load flow the central unit behind the scenes is the state estimation algorithm in vision network analysis we use the weighted least square algorithm for this module and as with any other state estimation algorithm, it is imperative that there needs to be a mathematical model for whatever system the state is being determined for. And in this case, as you can see on the slide here, so the .vnf is basically the vision network file format, which comprises of the entire information of the network that is uh, designed here. And uh, if you need to know a bit more about how it needs to be designed, you can look into one of our previous videos getting started with the vision network analysis where you can see how you can uh, 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 construct a network from scratch. Uh, after you have the mathematical model inputted for the state estimation, uh, you can see that we still need more inputs of data and that here is basically in the form of real measurements and pseudo measurements. So the real measurement basically refers to the meter data. So the meter data and uh, which is present in the grid. So this meter data is generally stored with the network operators in a data lake. And then you can pre-process this data lake uh, information and get what is needed uh, for this particular network and give it as an input to state estimation. And then when you come to pseudo measurements, what it really means is it is not always possible that uh, everything the uh, system is measured it might be because there is no information there or there is a data glitch 
or there is some data mishandling going on so when that happens there are few gaps to be found and we have to make sure that those gaps are somehow filled to make sure that the state estimation algorithm can give as good of an estimate as possible so to fill up these pseudo measurements there are multiple methods so one way is to use the generalized profiles generalized profiles basically refers to the uh, profiles which are based on the past for example the previous years profiles and you can get a similar estimate or a similar uh, trend going on and you can take those values into account for wherever the data is missing and uh, the other way is uh, using the bottom up approach so this is where the other software that we develop gaia voltage gaia low voltage network design also comes into play so here you can uh, design the low voltage network into as much uh, detail as possible and you can uh, generate the profiles there near the medium voltage and low voltage uh, networks uh, network sorry the transmission transformers and uh, you can get uh, a good in understanding of what is going on over there and then at the end you get a result profile obviously because you know, the input is a time series data profile data uh, that is being given as input so you also get a results as a profile at the end and it uh, it has to be made sure that it's important to keep in mind that all this is being done at the medium voltage level and that is why you can you have the usability of uh, gaia voltage network design to do the bottom up approach from the low voltage end to determine what is going on at some points in the medium voltage end especially at the um, medium voltage low voltage transformers so when you get the results from here you have multiple applications i won't go into too much detail into everything but the main applications are the short term planning and also maintaining network health so you can determine how good the network is at that point of time and you can automatize the system using scada or any uh, supervisory control system to uh, see or uh, change how things actually work Uh, uh in the grid so that is in brief the workflow and now we'll go into a small demo of how uh this module works to get a feel of it and hopefully you'll get a really clear understanding of how things work okay now coming to the demo so as you can see i've already opened vision network analysis here and uh, Uh, there's a demo network already here uh, which is a small one that i made for this purpose so you can see that there are 10 nodes and 10 transformer loads then a grid for the source uh, of 10 kv then uh, the transformer loads are basically 10 kv by 400 volts essentially the what we find in our distribution surroundings for we just before our households Uh, then you can see that when you come to calculate here you can find the data ribbon load for ribbon you can just go inside the ribbon and you can find multiple options here so you have a lot of things to choose and play around with i'll briefly give an overview of what each of them does and uh, give a uh, info give a good feel of how it works uh, the external measurement files this is basically to add the files basically uh, that you want so here i am adding two files so the measurement field which refers to this point here the distribution automation point and then the medium voltage low voltage readings point so which corresponds to the transformer loads so i select both of them and then i open them here so basically now i already have two things uh, here and the inputs can be uh, not limited to only power injections like in load flow but they can also have voltages or currents or anything that uh, can be useful here for state estimation or anything that can uh, serve as any information that is needed uh, the next option is uh, profile files so for the profile files it's essentially if you want to take an external profile into account and uh, compare it with the measurement files to see if there's anything that's missing or Uh, you want to miss those filling uh, fill those missing gaps with uh, uh, that particular reference file 
and then comes the main important point is the preprocessor so as you can see here it's ticked you can you have the option to also untick if you are really confident about your data and you don't want to spend extra time in this step but if you want to <coughs> then you can tick it you can you can see that there you can select the calculation interval uh, depending on what you want as the outputs but it has to be made sure that you have the data for at least the minimum of the calculation interval to make sure that you can get that interval so you can't have like uh 30 minute data and you want a 15 minute calculation interval uh data series as output that doesn't work but if you have a 15 minute data and you want a 30 minute then you have the ability to skip it and get a 30 minute data as a whole this helps in saving time and you calculate for lesser uh time stamps and you get the results far quickly now the other option is how to fill the missing data so here there are five options that we have done so it's basically you can fill Uh, with the same timestamp value from the previous week, the same timestamp value from the previous day, same timestamp value from the previous time, or same timestamp value uh, over the last ten days, and then they are taken. The mean is taken to get a more feel of uh, how good uh, it can be. And then the last option is taking the reference profile, which I already mentioned. If you choose this option, that is when you need to. put a, the file here which you want to compare it with uh, so i am choosing the preprocessor right now because the data that i have uh, given as input has some missing gaps so we'll see how well that it does really fill it up and then the other options are basically you can keep data so basically use the uh, the data that is being input you can keep it save it and then if you want to do another calculation you can just select the reuse da- the kept data option and you can just do another calculation so this saves the time uh, by not uh, having to enter the excel fields excel files again and then also you have the option to choose the date range or the time stamp basically uh, how much duration of the days you want the calculation to be performed or what particular time stamp you want the calculation to be performed so i am not going to do any the, any of that because the uh, uh, the data that i have is quite small here so i'll just go ahead and press okay to do the calculation right now and uh, yeah so you can see that it's quick also that's because the network is small and the data is taken is uh, small here you can right click here and you can see any element basically and see okay, the details so you can see for every 15 minute interval you can see the p q s everything that you need and you can also see the graph so when you see the graph so the red line here indicates the nominal power of the element there which is the transformer load then the orange line indicates the data from the measurement f- uh, files basically the excel files that we input uh, for this particular transformer load and then uh, corresponding to it we have the blue line which indicates the result from state estimation so i'll again reiterate this point state estimation doesn't give the exact value but it gives the best possible estimate so that is also one of the reasons you don't really get uh the very uh, every both of them to be overlapping at all times uh, but you can see that it's still a very good uh, way to uh, narrow down into what the real and uh, unknown uh, values are because the, the as i said previously there are few gaps that are missing but it has filled up those gaps and done a rather good job right now so you have the option to also change the type of display so the p the load rate if you want you can see the load rate the p the q the p and q the s everything that you want you can also have the choice to have the points or not have the points so but the, those are all minor specifications here and then you can also export the data here so you can go to results here and you can you find this excel uh, tab sheet and you can see here and export everything and everything is exported as excel so the nodes data the elements data the branches data everything is out here and you can do further pre further processing with this data if you want in in any way that uh, that is required or desired so this is in brief how the module works and how everything here is situated right now and uh, so i hope this is something that has cleared what uh, data driven load for essentially does so we are already at the final segment of this video i hope you had an enjoyable time watching it uh, 
uh, and uh, i hope it was clear how data driven load flow works and how it is uh, situated in vision network analysis and what is the importance of it uh, as promised before i'll again reiterate the fact that all the documentation that is pertaining to the development and uh, uh, whatever that is useful uh, for this module is mentioned in the description below with the links provided so you can check them out and uh, for further videos or anything that we are been up to at face to face you can follow us on linkedin and uh, you can uh, probably check us out there uh, so thank you and till next time